This is a financial report for Gemstar Productions. My name is Amelia DePew, and I'm presenting this report for Professor Jennifer Marshall's business accounting course at Full Sail University. In this report, I will go over the various financial statements that are most important for accounting, including the balance sheet, the profit and loss budget versus actual statement, and the statement of cash flows. I will highlight the positive and negative trends of those statements and suggest ways to enhance the positive trends and correct the negative ones. I will also talk about variances in the budget, along with Gemstar's financial ratios and how they compare to service industry ratios. After that, I will go over some appropriate internal controls that will benefit Gemstar Productions. And finally, I'm going to recap some important key terms and concepts that I've learned during Professor Marshall's course, which will help me perform well as Gemstar's production accountant. Okay, so let's start out with the balance sheet, also known as the Statement of Financial Position. This statement details the balance of income and expenditure at the end of a specified date. It does so by showing the, us the company's asset, liability, and equity accounts as of that moment in time. The formula used on the balance sheet is that a company's total assets are equal to its liabilities plus its equity. For Gemstar Productions, we see here that the total assets are $64,783.33. Then we can go down and look at the total liabilities, which are $40,233.34, and the total equity, which is $24,549.99. When you add those two together, you get $64,783.33, which is in fact equal to the total assets that we saw above. So as you can see, the chart of accounts for Gemstar is in balance. Now we're going to look at the profit and loss budget versus the actual statement. And this will show us a company's projected income and expenses versus its actual. In other words, it compares what was expected as far as money coming in and money going out and what money actually came in and went out. So let's go over some variances we see here. Because Gemstar Productions is a startup company, the numbers aren't quite what we want them to be. That's okay, because there are reasons for that. When you look at the event revenue and sales numbers, the budget projected $20,000 for revenue and $10,000 for sales. However, because it's the first month, we only had one event that brought in money. Those numbers will be much higher in the next quarter as we become more established, hold more events, and have higher sales. When you look at Gemstar's expenses, you'll see that the computer and internet expense was not billed this month, and that's because of a first month free promotional with the provider, so that came in under budget. The office supplies account shows a value of $2,666.67, but that purchase was for a free three month supply, and we budgeted the monthly value at $700, so you see a big difference in the numbers there. Finally, we see the payroll expense account has a difference of $1,800, and that is due to Gemstar being a new company and the fact that we are not fully staffed yet. Those numbers will also change over the first quarter, and by the next quarter, after we hire more employees, the variance should be much smaller. What's most important is that our profit and loss budget versus actual shows that Gemstar's net income for the first month is $549.99, which is awesome because we've made money and we didn't come out in the negative. Now, if you check out the variances here, you'll notice that almost everything came out under budget, which is positive because it's better to have more money than not enough. However, as we grow and learn as a company, we'll tighten up those numbers so we won't have such a large gap in the budget. All right, we're going to move on to the statement of cash flows, which details the activities that have cash flowing in and out of the company. These are broken down into three categories. Operating activities which are any accounts and transactions that are used to keep the company operating, like income, deposits we have with vendors, and payables. Investing activities, which is anything purchased as an investment for the company, such as long-term assets like the vehicle that was bought for $14,250. And lastly, we see the financing activities, which is any cash flowing out in and out that changes Gemstar's equity and is basically company stocks. And you'll notice at the bottom here, it shows how much the cash the company has at the end of the period, which in our case is $50,700. And that's a pretty solid number. Now I'm going to compare some important financial ratios so we can get an overview of how Gemstar is doing compared to the service industry as a whole. 
We have a working capital of $24,549.99, which is fairly positive for a new company in the service industry. Our current ratio is 1.6, and that's higher than in the industry ratio of 1.3, which is good. And we have a debt equity ratio of 0.62, which comes in somewhat lower than the industry ratio of 0.75. Next, we see the return on equity for the Gemstar is at 23%, which is slightly higher than the industry average of 21.5%. And finally, we have the return on assets. For Gemstar, it's just over the industry average of 6.5%, and it comes in at 7%. So overall, it looks like Gemstar is pretty close to industry averages, and that's a positive. Time for some internal controls. Gemstar, along with any other business, needs to actively protect itself and minimize its risk. That is done through internal controls like staff reference checks and training, which is the first line of defense. Resume reference checks, background checks, credit checks, these are all ways to get, the know, get to know who the company is hiring and reduce fraud, theft, and complacency. Segregation of duties which is a policy where employees share responsibilities within a key function of a company process, such as authorizing and approving transactions, making journal entries, and tracking payments. Having employees work alongside each other reduces opportunity for fraud, theft, and human error. Proper authorization and approval is another important control measure. This is when a company decides and delegates who approves transactions, along with how and when those transactions are made. That way, everyone knows who's responsible for what, and there is less room for invalid or unauthorized transactions. Bank reconciliation, which is basically just making sure our accounting numbers match those of the bank, and it's a way to find bank errors or transaction discrepancies. Lastly, we have auditing, which is probably the single most important internal control and should be done regularly. Auditing is a way to cut through the muck and expose any financial or employee issues within the company so that they can be corrected. I'm going to end this financial report with a recap of some very important things I've learned from Professor Marshall in this business accounting course. The first thing is that QuickBooks is your friend. It's an easy-to-use accounting tool that almost every company, large or small, should utilize. It's an effective way to keep track of finances and has everything you need at the click of a mouse. Secondly, accounting should be done using the generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. Yes, some smaller companies are coming up with other standards to use, but these GAAP standards have been used across the board for much longer and are recognized by everyone in the industry. They're also regulated by different organizations, which reduces fraud, theft, and mismanagement. And that brings me to fraud and ethics. Business and accounting is all about money. And where there is money, there is potential for fraud and unethical behavior. It's vital that ethical standards are upheld when dealing with any finances, especially those that belong to someone else. People count on accountants to be honest and show integrity, and that's because they're sometimes what stands between having it all and losing it all. Next up, we have budgeting. You cannot run a successful company without budgeting. Whether it's a basic static budget or an elaborate rolling budget, you cannot run a successful company without budgeting. Finally, the biggest lesson I took away with me is how crucial auditing is for business. No one can be on top of everything at once. Regular auditing is a financial failsafe. Whether large or small, even basic auditing can make or break a company. Audits tell us how the company is doing, what's working, what's not, and what or who needs to be changed or eliminated. And it's the biggest line of defense against fraud, theft, and mismanagement. My name is Amelia DePew, and I'd like to thank you for watching and listening to this financial report for Gemstar Productions.